we're here at Lynch Park in Beverly, Massachusetts with Ed Duggan of the Kayak Learning Center. Uh, Ed, you're, you've done this a number of years now. It's safe to say that you're a real pro at uh, early season kayaking. What are some of the things that you recommend uh, wearing on an early, uh, early season kayak trip? Well, first of all, the main concern would be the uh, temperature of the water. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're properly clothed. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, I would probably put on a piece of poly, polyethylene. Yeah. All right, poly pro, as they would say. Okay. And then possibly, depending on what kind of gear I, I decided to use, uh, possibly a vest, uh -huh. fleece. Okay. Yep. That would be my first layer. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if I w went with a dry suit, totally a dry suit, totally, I would probably put on a Farmer John type uh, jumpsuit. All right, mm -hmm. which will go underneath the dry suit. Now, uh, okay. when, and when we're talking about dry suit, it's important to point out you're talking about a suit that actually seals out any yes. possibility yes. of water That's getting correct. in, and then therefore, if you happen to go overboard, you'll be protected. You won't get hypothermic as, as quickly. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That 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 outfit would look something like this, and it comes in many many different uh, possibilities. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah, this one happens to have uh, booties. Yep on the feet so that your feet are dry also. Yeah. Uh, when you're in this combination with the jumpsuit, you're nice and warm and toasty. And if you did go in, yeah. no water would get yeah. inside and you'd be protected. Right, it would, okay. give, it would give you a, a lot longer to lot be in the longer. water right. and survive rather not, than not, soaking not, wet. Not that it's the answer to unlimited time. Right. But, but it'll you, buy you, it'll yeah. buy you some minutes. Enough time to get back in the boat. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's if I use a dry dry suit. Now, what I may what I might uh, do also is if it was a, wasn't quite as cold, mm -hmm. I would go with dry pants, which would look something like this. Yeah. Okay, which is sort of a half a half a dry suit. Uh -huh. Okay, in which I would wear uh, leggings, something like this underneath them. Yep. Okay, possibly uh, uh, wool socks too, which goes with both outfits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm which would fit nicely inside the booties. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, possibly a spray jacket on top of the poly and the fleece. Right. Okay. But obviously those solutions aren't as good these as the, are, dry, as this the dry, is, dry suit. These solutions aren't as good for very early paddling in the early winter. Okay. This is probably more of like a spring outfit. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Before we go to shorties, board pants, T-shirts right. or whatever for the and, and of course okay. you don't. And of course the most important right. thing is is, is is the life jacket. Yeah. Okay. After we geared ourselves up, we would put on a life jacket. Okay. Possibly uh, if the, it was very very cold, I'd put on and I'm I'm known for just keeping a hat, a nice stocking cap. All right. Orange I like because it can be seen. Okay. A set of neoprene gloves. Because the one thing you have to be very careful of that will probably destroy your ride is your cold hands. Okay. You can't do anything if you, you if, can't. You're, if your you hands aren't up, working. You you're can not put up. Get very you can far. put up with cold feet, but cold hands will not will take you down. Uh huh. Okay. Especially in the winter time, if you uh, do your uh, do your route the wrong way, and a lot of people do, they have a tendency to go downwind, and then when they turn around, they're all hot and sweaty. They got to go upwind. Yeah, and that's when you feel it. So, okay, yeah, that's another point uh, to to bring up, Ed, is that you know you really want to carefully plan your route. Yes. Obviously, you're yes. starting out. Your your probably your instinct is to go with the wind right. all the time, but then you got to right. remember you right. got to come back, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. My my recommendation, and I, I try to practice it all the time, unless I know I'm doing a total downwind run, I'm getting picked up. Okay, sometimes we'll do that a group of us. Right. Okay, is go your upwind leg first. It's the hardest, and then you will turn around get the easy ride going. That makes sense. And that's that's yeah. the way to do it. Now, how about in terms of, uh, of uh, buddying up with someone? Isn't that pretty important? You, you want to make sure... You should try to, especially if you're a beginner in the sport, uh, uh, to always have somebody in the winter with you. And, and, the, and the more experience you have, uh, obviously, uh, there are a lot of solo people that do go out on their own. Mm -hmm. It's just the nature of the sport. There's something about it that people like the solitary aspect yeah. of, of uh, kayaking. But in the winter time, quite frankly, it's not recommended unless you have a certain ability to even attempt 
yeah. to do cold water paddling. Right, right. Okay. I won't recommend it to anybody other than people I really How about, how about things like fog, like a, a, an air horn or a whistle or something like that in case you find yourself in a situation where you you know you're you know you're on some remote island or something right. like that you, you can, that's something that's small that you can bring with you and, yeah. and, and signal to today, a passing boat or maybe yeah and in, in today's world where we have cell phone yeah. it's recommended you have a cell phone in a waterproof case yeah. okay cell phone whistle on life jacket yep uh, possibly a handheld GPS possibly GPS uh, and those three items will probably take care of yeah. you Okay, uh, in, in your worst case. Right. Now, if you do some offshore extreme stuff, or yep. um, there are other devices. This is this called, is called an ACR. This is a this is a, a personal locator beacon. Right. And it actually functions much like a EPIRB on the larger vessels. You can get one of these. I, I highly recommend it. I, I keep one with me when I'm kayaking or, or camping or anywhere I go boating. It re retails for about you know you can get one for about three to four hundred bucks. Uh, and uh, this will act just like an EPIRB and, and signal authorities when you activate it. Right. And they'll lead, it'll lead you right to you, especially if you're in an inshore area. They can be there within 30 minutes sometimes. So, uh, you know, again, for a small investment of $300, this could really uh, give you a lot of peace of mind. Right, right. Well, thanks, Ed. I appreciate the, the quick rundown on, right. sa on safety tips. Yep. We'll be back probably checking in with Ed later this summer and, uh, and find out some more great kayaking tips from him. I'm Tom Richardson for Voting Local. Thanks for watching.